Welcome to the Alex Jones Show on this Sunday, August 2nd, 2015. I'm David Knight. I'll be your host today. We're going to be joined by Alex Jones with some special reports coming up in the next segment, as well as a special remembrance of Roddy Piper, who died suddenly on Friday. We're all very sad to hear that. We're going to look at his impact on society. The man was not only an entertainer, he was also someone who was a patriot and also someone who was a family man, beloved by his family, and he loved his family. We're going to look at those things. Alex has a tribute to him. And we're going to look at a special report about how selling baby parts is evidently, the way the government is acting, a state secret. Well, it's no secret that they have a vested interest with Planned Parenthood, those in the Obama administration. We're going to look at articles from InfoWars exposing that. And, of course, yesterday, talking about financial hooks into politicians, we had... Five GOP presidential hopefuls go hat in hand to the Koch brothers looking for money. Very interesting retort from Donald Trump calling them puppets. We're going to take a look at that. We're going to take a look at the presidential race along with the borders, with immigration. We're also going to look at some hopeful news about global warming. Now, it's not that it's not happening, but if it is happening, one of the first places to go under is going to be Washington, D.C., <laughs> according to them. So we can keep our fingers crossed. I don't believe it for a moment. We're going to expose some of the phony science behind it, but we're also going to look at uh, something that could be very good news. <laughs> it's just that it's going to take far too long, according to their projections. But when we go back and we look at... Uh, the political race, when we talk about what's going to be coming up this week, it's going to be, you're going to hear a lot about this this week. We're going to have not only the event that happened yesterday, the Koch brothers, but of course, there's going to be the very first uh, debate, presidential debate on the Republican side this Thursday, I believe it is. But already many people, as we talked about this last week, I found many people were incredibly angry with what I had to say in terms of vetting Donald Trump. You see, the election in many people's eyes is already over, and there's only one man who can be a savior. Have we heard this story before? Is this the song we heard with Barack Obama from the Democrats before? This is a PSYOP test, folks. Elections are a test of whether or not you're really capable of self-government. Can you see through this PSYOP? Can you see that they not only live, but they lie? We're talking about Roddy Piper. The true thing to take away from this election is that they lie. Do you really think things would have been any different if we'd had Mitt Romney instead of Obama? Do you think we would have had Obamacare? Of course we would. They would have just branded it Romney Care. The fix was in, folks. Romney had already worked with Ted Kennedy to get Romney Care put into Massachusetts when he was governor. They patterned Obamacare after it. They had already set up the system with a guy on both sides. You want a black guy or you want a white guy? Do you want a woman? Do you want somebody else? This is like the cast of Gilligan's Island. When I look at these people that went to the Koch brothers, when we're going to look at the debates that happen later this week, it's time for you to take a look at what the candidates are saying. It's time for you to take a look at who they are. But it's also time for us to grow up and understand that although we need to understand what's happening nationally and globally, we need to think along those lines to see the big picture. We can really only effectively work at the local level. And so we're going to take a look at jury nullification. A very important case happened, I think, this week. It only affected the life of one family. It was very important to them. But I think it's another example of how people can take back their lives, take back their communities, stand up to the government. And, of course, it's going to be not only jury nullification, but it's going to be state nullification. If we think that we're going to be carried on a feather bed to a state of liberty from a state of tyranny, we are delusional. They lie. Stay with us. We'll be right back with Alex Jones with Roddy Piper tributes and more. Many historians have pointed out that history basically repeats itself or that it rhymes, that humans go through cycles. And that's why almost every historian, political scientist on the left and the right, transcending the spectrum, talks about the fact that we see the very same buildups that we saw before World War I and World War II, and the Napoleonic Wars as well of 200 years ago. But you add to that all the high-tech developments and the large population 
Uh, the population back in Napoleon's time wasn't even a billion. It's seven and a half billion now. You add the super weapons and some of the super technologies to the equation, humanity is coming to its Atlantis point. Whether Atlantis was real or not, the allegory, uh, the, the story is very useful to understand that in that legend that Plato wrote about more than 2,000 years ago, on an island, humans had developed advanced technologies. They'd harnessed gravity. They could live longer. Uh, they had incredible medicine, incredible language. They could basically just create things instantaneously. And something happened, and there was an explosion. Something much larger than Fukushima. Something much larger uh, than what we know happened at Chernobyl or the atomic bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Now that said, I just wanted to set the table to get folks thinking about the historical, legendary, epic moment we're reaching. It's undoubtedly here. And a lot of folks that haven't studied history sit back and go, oh yeah, everything's fine. Well, it's our concern about the future and trying to preserve peace and prosperity that keeps us from having World War III, like we almost had during the Cuban Missile Crisis. Now that said, we have gotten such a normalcy bias or we've gotten to where we are just, just, just so accepting that when China has mobile execution vans killing political dissidents and selling their organs on the world market, it's not even a news issue now. 20 years ago it was. When humans are being crossed with cows and pigs so they can produce uh, babies uh, in utero inside cows to be harvested, it's in academic papers, it's not even in the news, or it's buried in a BBC article. And the public says that doesn't exist. Just like spider goats have existed for 20 years and they say they don't exist, even though it's in the news. Part goat, part spider. We're light years past all that. And that's one reason the elite is so arrogant, is they think they're God, but they're not. Now, I wanted to set the table with that information because we're covering what's happening in Europe and the police state that's sweeping it, just as it's sweeping the United States. We're going into Italy today. We'll be reporting live from there on the situation that's unfolding and the collapse of Rome uh, as their own mayor uh, is calling it. But I wanted to talk about humanity and value in human life. If we don't value human life, nobody else will. That goes without saying. But the fact that Planned Parenthood, three videos have been released admitting the buying and selling of baby parts and the harvesting of organs, and the fact that we know that they're keeping, from the reports we have, partial birth abortion babies alive at, at some clinics overseas and domestically, and that new video was about to come out showing the vivisection of the living babies that could have been adopted right there. That, you know, the big prize is a seven, eight month uh, pregnancy that comes in. They don't tell the woman, we're about to sell this for two hundred, three hundred, four thousand dollars $400,000. We know some private clinics are connected to this. Researchers are infiltrating Planned Parenthood to prove they're involved. And they've now gone to a federal judge appointed by Obama to block the release of this video. So, so they sell it up as being about a woman's choice and being about you know, not having overpopulation. And at one level, there's an argument there. But overarching is the dehumanization, overarching is the sale of organs, overarching is the macabre of this that dehumanizes us all, and the fact that it's illegal to harvest the organs of a baby and to sell them. And, I mean, that's admitted, and that the government's moving to block this. And within this is a microcosm of how they would deny the Manhattan Project existed, or they would deny La Cosa Nostra existed till the 50s. Everybody knows there's Italian mob now by calling it a conspiracy theory. Or they would deny that Roundup was giving people cancer, uh, glyphosate. Or they would deny that world government was being established. And now we're under open world government with the Pope announcing it. One reason we're going to be going to Rome and talking to folks on the street. People have to come to that moment and admit Alex Jones was right, Ron Paul was right, G. Edward Griffin was right. Aaron Russo was right, Matt Drudge was right, World Net Daily was right, so many countless others that just did their research were right. I don't want to be right. I wish I was wrong. But it's all true and it's worse than even we thought. And where we're going is a very horrible place. The reason they're banning free speech in areas like Spain, the reason they're having capital controls in Italy and Greece is because the collapse is coming. 
It's already here in many areas of the world. And the public needs to make preparation in case we can't stop the collapse, but also needs to work to try to stop it. Now, we're going to be airing this today on the live radio show, uh, co-hosted with David Knight, and I want to get his breakdown on all of this. And how long have we been going here? So I want to fit this into one segment, and, and, and then I'm going to do another report uh, from the ground here on Rowdy Piper passing, because it's important to remember patriots. And he was a listener and aware of the New World Order and helped spread the word long before I was even involved with movies like They Live. But it is in celebrating humanity and celebrating human life that we're going to be able to turn the tide on this entire situation. Now, contrasting the hypocrisy of the elite and how they're above the law, tax-exempt, can commit all these crimes. Unless they commit crimes against themselves, then they go to jail, a.k.a. Bernie Madoff or Ken Lay. You remember the Chattanooga shooting a month ago? Well, we knew this was coming. We knew that it was actually Marines that ended up driving the shooter off. And then the police went and took him out. And it turns out the lieutenant commander that ran the recruiting station got to his car, got a firearm, and shot at the killer to drive him off before he could kill more than the five people he was able to kill. Now, uh, it is on Infowars.com. Uh, it's, 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 it's been announced by Alan West and others who's talked to the folks that are involved that they are looking to indict the head of the recruiting station and one of the other Marines that got to firearms and fought back. You have to understand, armed Marines at the White House protect the president. Armed Marines at our embassies protect U.S. embassies, which are basically seen as ships of the United States on land under international maritime law. And the fact that they disarm the troops whenever the Secretary of Defense comes into a base just shows the attitude of this establishment. Saddam Hussein, certainly not a good guy, could stand in front of 10,000 people with guns and they could all shoot him in the air and nobody would kill him. But here, our establishment acts like we're the enemy because they are occupiers. Four foreign banks that have taken over the United States. And the reason we see tyranny coming into place, again, is because that's the fallback historically, and they'll want to start wars to take our anger at the corrupt establishment and focus it on some outside enemy. So this is the upside-down world we live in where the establishment can be armed, but we can't. Where babies can be harvested and killed, and a judge appointed by Obama blocks it and says you can't release those videos. Here's some news, Judge. Justice will be served, whether you're up there in your robe or not. There are some good judges, there are some bad. You clearly are bad. And the public's losing face, uh, faith in the judiciary, and they're not going to put up with it anymore. There will be more hacks, obviously. The videos will be released. Uh, you're not going to be able to stop the defunding of your criminal organization that's at the heart of the eugenics program that I exposed in the film Endgame, which is seminal for folks to watch. We're going to throw it back to David Knight. And then uh, later in the transmission, I'll be back with another special tape report shot for you uh, so that while we're covering things in Europe, we're still able to cover what's happening here in North America. But it's all interconnected, all intertwined. Get upset. Have empathy for these babies. Have empathy for the troops on the don't treat list. Realize that dehumanizing these people is about dehumanizing you so that you can be enslaved, so your bank accounts can be taken, so you can be turned into chattel. Alex Jones signing off for InfoWars.com from the front lines of the fight to awaken humanity. Okay, and this is David Knight in Austin, and we're going to be talking about some breaking news items in the next segment. At the bottom of the hour, we're going to have a tribute to Roddy Piper from Alex Jones. We're also going to play a collection of some of his work, as well as some comments that he made about his family, some very touching comments about his family. Stay with us. We'll be right back. We have a lot of news. I want to cover some uh, of that this particular segment, and then we're going to have a... a uh, Memorial to uh, Roddy Piper, who died suddenly on Friday. Alex Jones has comments about that. We're going to play you some snippets of his work that were put together by our editors here, as well as some comments that he had uh, just shortly before he died, just a couple of months before he died. Someone caught him at an airport, and he was talking about his family. It was very touching, I think. One of the news articles that we've got today, I think, is absolutely outrageous. The Navy is going to charge the officer who fire, fired on the Islamicists during the Chattanooga terror attacks. This is reported by Alan West, and they're saying that Lieutenant Commander White, who fired back at this shooter, may be charged for disarming a firearm. 
Now, Alan West reported this week that he will be charged for doing that. And here's his comment. He says, Secretary of the Navy Ray Mavis is more concerned about lifting the ban on transgendered sailors than allowing the unarmed forces to protect themselves on military bases, at recruitment centers, at other places. But of course, the Obama administration is telling us it was just merely coincidental that this attack was directed at military recruiting stations, not one, but two. And it was just coincidental that this guy was a jihadi. It wasn't an act of terrorism. It had something to do with him smoking pot or something. But Alan West goes on to say, this knucklehead, Secretary of the Navy Ray Mavis, has no problem with the Navy seeking to destroy the career of a sailor, a commander of an installation, returning fire against an Islamic jihadist attack. I do not care if it was his personal weapon. He deserves a medal for facing the enemy. Absolutely right. It's absolutely outrageous how they are still keeping soldiers disarmed, how they went out even when you had citizens from the local area come out and say, well, if they're not going to be allowed to carry firearms without getting in trouble, we're going to stand there and protect them. Joe Biggs went to one of the places. He talked to other people that were there. It's absolutely outrageous that the military, that the Pentagon would then say, no, you people have to leave or you're going to be arrested. So they threaten civilians who are there in a public place to protect the people that are not allowed to protect themselves. These are people who are charged with protecting the nation. These are people who are there to protect the government. And yet that government that has trained them, that government that they've sworn allegiance to, that they're in uniform for, does not trust them or allow them to protect themselves. And of course, it only gets worse when you become a veteran. Thus, what has come up in these discussions going back and forth about Senator McCain. You know, I made some comments. I vetted uh, Donald Trump this last week, and we're going to have some more comments about that today. And many people were totally outraged that I would criticize some things in his background, that I would criticize policies that he has talked about. Has it come to this? Has it come to the point that even before the very first debate, about 15 months before the election, that the election is already over for many people, that they have already put themselves in as camp followers of one individual, that they follow this person, this brand, that they want to close their eyes, stop their ears, stamp their feet and say, it's done. If this individual isn't there, then we're finished. This country is finished. I would remind you to go back and look at subsequent elections. Look at the people that we were offered. Like I mentioned in the very first segment, do you think we would not have had nationalized forced insurance like Obamacare if we'd had Mitt Romney? He had already done something like that in Massachusetts. It was a template, a model for what was going to be done at the national level. The corporate cronies who were going to force that upon us had it set up. It was a rigged game. They had somebody in on both sides. That's the way this is working. You need to understand that there is a fight to be made. We need to talk about these issues. We need to wake people up. But the changes are going to be made at the local level, and you are going to have to get involved. It isn't something where you're going to be transported on a feather bed to a state of liberty. That's merely a delusional dream. They want you to believe that. They want you to believe that everything depends on one person getting elected. It is a phony system. We just had an election 10 months ago where you were told that if you got the GOP in, they were going to change Obamacare. They didn't make any changes in it. They immediately showed their contempt for the people who had voted them in. They don't care about immigration. They don't care about any of this stuff. That's why it is so powerful when somebody like Donald Trump rightfully comes out and says the very powerful things that he has to say. And he has some interesting things to say about this event that happened, I call it an event that happened, where you had five presidential hopefuls go to the Koch brothers convention, a private meeting, looking for money. He had uh, some good comments. We'll get to that in a moment. First, I want to go to some other news. A judge who blocked Planned Parenthood videos is an Obama appointee and raised $230,000 for Obama. Now, this is what Alex Jones was just talking about. How it is a state secret. We're not allowed to know what's going on. And of course, Obama was telling us that it was simply a conspiracy theory. All of these Planned Parenthood videos, don't, don't look at those. The major media is telling us, don't, don't look at that. Don't think about that. See, they always want you 
to be compartmentalized, to not look at the evidence. That's why it's imperative for us to look at what they're trying to feed us. If for no other reason than we know the battle plan of the people who are trying to establish a global government. Not that we're going to get somebody elected that's really going to change anything, but we need to know what their direction is. And you can discern that if you listen to what they're saying. But of course, they don't want us to even look at any of these videos that were taken undercover, getting people to talk about how they are selling the body parts. And according to Obama, it is all simply a conspiracy theory. Don't look at that closely. Well, let's look at a real conspiracy theory. Let's look at what's going on with global warming. Now, I said I'm going to have some good news, and maybe this is the best news of the day. Washington, D.C. is sinking into the ocean. Yes, uh, they're saying that it's not just metaphorically, it's literally, 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 literally sinking into the ocean, as we would say. Okay. Now, they say, according to new research, the land in the Chesapeake Bay region, including the nation's capital, is sinking rapidly. The sea level in the Chesapeake is rising at twice the global average, faster than anywhere else on the East Coast, which means that D.C. will sink six or more inches in the next hundred years. <sighs> Say, it's going to take 100 years for them to go away. <laughs> it's just too gradual. We need something that's going to get Washington out of our life in a much more rapid way. Things like state nullification, things like jury nullification. But, uh, you know, what we've always referred to as Rome on the Potomac, if, there's, if what they're saying is true, it could become Venice on the Potomac. Look, I don't believe for a minute in global warming. I don't believe especially in man-made global warming. As we've pointed out many times, they are messing with the data, number one. We've tried for a very long time, a group that I worked with, to try to get the original data that they based their conclusions on. When people like Michael Mann at the University of Virginia was coming out talking about climate change and using that to push a legislative agenda, using that to push cap and tax, an agenda that is global tax, an agenda that is uh, trying to take control of our lives. We don't have time for it before the break, but we're going to talk about some mind-blowing temperature fraud at NOAA. Where does this come from? Where does this phony agenda come from? When we come back, we're going to come in with a tribute to Roddy Piper and Alex Jones's tribute to him, a man he knew. We'll be right back. I feel like this all the time, trying to politically awaken people that they're being lied to, that there's an agenda it's not left or right. It's, hey, there's mind control going on. The signals broadcast 24 hours a day through all this media. Just become aware of it, and they'll say, there's nothing going on. And I want to say, put on these glasses or start chewing concrete. <laughs> They have taken the hearts and minds of our leaders. They have recruited the rich and the powerful. And they have blinded us to the truth. The question is, do we all work for central bankers? That's what I want to address to our guest tonight. Our impulses are being redirected. We are living in an artificially induced state of consciousness that resembles sleep. An estimated 50 to 70 million Americans suffer from a sleep disorder or sleep deprivation. Outside the limit of our sight, feeding off us, perched on top of us from birth to death, are our owners. Latest census numbers prove the United States has the biggest gap between rich and poor compared to all westernized countries today. Our projections show that by the year 2025, not only America, but the entire planet will be under the protection and the dominion of this power alliance. The gains have been substantial, both for ourselves and for you, the human power elite. <laughs> For the first time in all of human history, mankind is politically awakened. That's a total new reality. I've got one that can see. We can't be the only ones who can see. Unfortunately, you've grown up hearing voices that incessantly warn of government as nothing more than some separate sinister entity that's got at the root of all our problems. It's a new morning in America. Fresh, vital, the old cynicism is gone. We have faith in our leaders. We're optimistic as to what becomes of it all. It really boils down to 
to our ability to accept. We don't need pessimism. I have two words for you. Predator drones. <laughs> and who are you, little fellow? You will never see it coming. Now I'm predicting the first guy who uses a Second Amendment weapon to bring a drone down that's been hovering over his house is going to be a folk hero in this country. Not nice. There is a signal broadcast every second of every day through our television sets. I'm just trying to warn you folks, the television is a giant LED weapon system. It's so advanced. They got a monkey farm in Bastrop, folks, that they do all sorts of testing on great apes, rhesus monkeys, the whole nine yards. And they go, oh, you didn't see this, and punch a button, and it'd be hundreds of monkeys with wires in their brains with television sets brainwashing them. All I ever have to do is be famous. People watch me, and they love me. You can have a little taste of that good life, too. Now, I know you want it. Hell, everybody does. Do it to your own kind. What's the threat? We all sell out every day. Might as well be on the winning team. The real men of the world have to stand up and say, I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubble gum. <laughs> Time to take a stand, boys. You know what? You got a little courage. Stand up for yourself. Waging war on corruption. It's Alex Jones, coming to you live from the front lines of the InfoWar. The Oscar winners give a press conference and how to buy a sailboat as... I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass, and I'm all out of bubblegum. You know, I've gotten to know a lot of the uh, professional acrobats that are professional wrestlers, and they're really interesting uh, men, Jesse Ventura and many others. But from all the folks I've talked to, Rowdy Piper, they say, was like the coolest, most down-to-earth guy out there. And he literally just came from nowhere, very poor, um, and just basically got spotted for his talent and picked up and, and got into wrestling. And he died at 61. Uh, I learned from Sean Stone, Oliver Stone's uh, son, years ago uh, that uh, Mr. Piper was a listener and was really upset about the New World Order and had been for decades and was aware of globalism. And that's pretty obvious starring in a film like They Live. So I talked to Sean Stone. I said, well, let's get him on sometime. And he called up and he said, how about tomorrow? So we did one interview with Mr. Piper. And a few months ago, I was trying to get him back on and heard that he was having health issues. And I thought, oh, well, I'm sure he'll get better. And he's gone. Um, and it's not just that he was in some movies I liked that were all about waking up, coming out of the cave, Plato's cave, transcending the controlled paradigm, coming out of the matrix. It was that he was a guy who cared about freedom and was upset about what was happening in the world. And he's gone now. And so I, I just wanted to celebrate Rowdy Rowdy Piper, and I wanted to celebrate all the other patriots, whether they were famous or whether they weren't famous, whether they be black, white, old, or young, north, east, south, west, who care about freedom and who strive uh, to build and create and trailblaze and take action. That's really what it's all about. So I want to thank Sean Stone. Uh, for getting me in touch with Piper, for letting me learn that another great person uh, is aware of what's happening in the world so that he could share his ideas with the people. Uh, later this week, I'm going to have uh, Darren McBreen, one of our great editors, edit down an hour and a half interview I did with Piper to some highlights, maybe 10 minutes, to play that on the weekday show, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're going to be reporting, obviously, uh, from uh, Italy now on the incredible situations there. That's really the heart of the EU uh, with the Pope coming out and calling for world government and carbon taxes and a lot more. But I wanted to just take some time out to celebrate these poor little babies that never get to be outside the womb and, and, and realize they're human. And to also celebrate people that got a chance to come outside the wound, uh, like Rowdy Rowdy Piper. And to celebrate all of you out there that love beauty and love justice and want to stand against the forces of tyranny and death that are Planned Parenthood and the New World Order. All right, I throw you back to Austin, Texas, and David Knight. Mr. Rowdy Rowdy Piper, we love you, we appreciate you, and you live on in the hearts and minds of everybody out there that loves freedom. And they live, as 
probably more powerful than even the first episode of The Matrix in getting people outside the box. Uh, and uh, we, you will be sorely missed, but uh, I know you're going to be appreciated up there in heaven with all the host of the good souls. God bless you. Thank you very much. That's Alex Jones talking about Roddy Piper, who passed away on Friday, suddenly at the age of 61. If you want to see the tribute for th that we put together, we started this segment with uh, the collection of clips interspersed with reality because it was a very powerful metaphor that is very true today. If you want to see that, you can go to They Lives Rowdy Roddy Piper, dead at 61 at Infowars.com. You can also see Alex's tribute there. Uh, embedded in that article as well as the full interview. Alex said it's going to be edited down into a shorter interview, but you can also see the full interview uh, interspersed in that, uh, embedded in that article. Now, who was Roddy Piper? Roddy Piper was somebody who was an entertainer, but he was also somebody who really did put on the glasses. Somebody who re could really see. That's what we are trying to do here at InfoWars. We're trying to get you to put on the glasses. We want you to look at what's going on on the national stage. And stage is an appropriate name for it because it is a very well-produced <laughs> process. It is a stage. We want you to take a look at that. We want you to look at what's going on globally. Think about that. See the agenda. See what is behind these politicians who are running for presidential office. Then we want you to act locally. A part of that is being with the family and the friends that you have at a local level. Many times we look at people who are famous, like Roddy Piper, we don't realize, of course, that they have a family that they love very much that loves them a great deal. I want to play just a little bit of a spontaneous interview that he did with TMZ. They caught him at an airport where he was going between uh, cities and talk to him about his family. Here's that clip. Also, oh, how are your kids doing? One of your kids is in uh, MMA, is that correct? Yeah, cool. Uh, he's doing great. He's undefeated as an amateur, and he's uh, turning pro. I don't know. You know, do you want him? <laughs> so, yeah, sure. Yeah, give us a setup. We, we'll take it. My, you know what? He's my best friend. He's that's best that's friend. a great, great thing best, to have. My son's my best friend. Without a doubt. My daughters I have three daughters. One's married to a captain in the Army, wounded twice. The other's married to a Green Beret. Tough you got lucky, crowd. yeah. Tough crowd. <laughs> what's uh, what's the t-shirt say? You know this, you'll see this uh, about a week. And he's got a t-shirt says, I stand for the silent because he doesn't like bullies. We don't like bullies. We see what they're doing. Stay with us and be right back. This hour of the Alex Jones Show is brought to you by the products that we sell at InfoWarsLife.com. Products like Survival Shield X2 Nascent Iodine. We do have that in stock now. It goes out of stock frequently. Right now you can get that at InfoWarsLife.com. We have over 400 reviews on the site 99% of those reviews would recommend it to a friend or family member. Let me read you a couple of those reviews right now, because I think it's a great way for you to get a feel for what other people think about the product, their experience with it. This is one from someone, dog lover, Phoenix, Arizona. I've been diagnosed with hypothyroidism and was taking medication, but after taking X2, my tests came back much more positive. I no longer need to take medication. I also give it to my dog. Well, you might want to check with your veterinarian first before you do that. See what kind of a dosage. Uh, look, you need iodine. It's an essential nutrient. Uh, but uh, again, uh, check on that. You also might talk to, uh, talk to your uh, vet about giving them raw organic honey. That's something that works really well with our dog when it gets sick. Um, another one from George Auburn, Auburndale, Florida. He says, I received my order. After using it for a week, I've noticed that my medicine and or body is responding to my blood sugar levels and they're actually dropping. That's great for me. It's easy to take. It really works. Look, if you don't have proper levels of vital nutrients, there's all kinds of symptoms that can pop up. You need to make sure that you and your family have a store of essential nutrients, things that are not going to go bad right now is a good time to stock up on it. You can find that at InfoWarsLife.com. And we had free shipping for the month of July. That has now been extended for another couple of days. I just saw that on the website. I don't know how long that's going to go. It's not going to be for the, for the full month. It's just going to be for another couple of days. So right now, you can get everything at InfoWarsLife.com for free shipping. And one of those things you can get that is in stock is Survival Shield X2 Nascent Iodine, a great form of iodine, a nutrient flavor, as well as uh, something that is going to protect you, not just giving you nutrition, but also protecting you. Uh, you don't need to resort to something that's an emergency type of iodine when there's some sort of a accident. A government's been buying millions of doses of that, but it's much better to take something that's going to be 
not a bad form of iodine like they're buying for an emergency situation, but something that you can take on a regular basis that is going to help your body on a regular basis and fight low-level accumulative radiation that you may be exposed to, like Fukushima radiation, that type of thing. So it's always something to keep in your store of preparedness products. Now, in the last section, we were talking about Roddy Piper, again, dead at 61. Uh, we're all very sad to see that happen. And as we were going to the break, we didn't quite have time to finish that clip. But of course, like all of us, we have friends, we have family. He was very much loved by his family. You could certainly see that in that clip. He survived by his wife, Kitty, four children, including three daughters and his son, Colton, who is pursuing a career in professional wrestling. And as Roddy Piper said, he's my best friend. That was a clip from just a few months ago when he was uh, caught at the airport by someone from TMZ. When I was talking earlier about taking the glasses off, one of the reasons that we talk about Roddy Piper is not just that he was in a great metaphorical movie by John Carpenter, They Live, but because he actually, in real life, put on the glasses. And as I said, that's what we're trying to get you to do, trying to get you to look closely at what's going on, to try to discern and understand what's really behind it. There's a lot of ways that they try to keep us from really understanding what's going on. Every time we have something where we start to uh, get, gain an understanding, just as we saw these videos coming out about Planned Parenthood, isn't it interesting that out of nowhere, the president, as well as all of the media, goes into a frenzy about a lion that was shot on the other side of the planet, about a poaching that was going on on the other side of the planet, they say. Now, of course, this dentist had paid $55,000 to Robert Mugabe. But we're supposed to, in the words of Piers Morgan, he wants to hunt, quote, fat, greedy, selfish, murderous businessmen like Dr. Palmer. Well, he's not fat. He's not a businessman. They point out in Time Magazine, of all places, defending what is going on and looking at what the real source is, even of this problem. Who's really responsible for the killing of Zimbabwe's lions and other wildlife? I would say to you that Cecil the lion is not a lion. Cecil is a red herring. And another hunting analogy, it was the people in England who wanted to stop fox hunting. And they would wait in the woods, and as they were chasing the foxes in their ceremonial hunt, they would run out from the cover with stinky fish, red herring. And they would run, drag them all across the track uh, behind the fox so that the hounds would lose the scent. That is precisely what this is about. Ignoring what's going on in Zimbabwe, but trying to distract us from what's going on with Planned Parenthood, with these videos. They don't want to talk about it, but they will talk about the murder of one lion. That's what we talked about many times last week. And of course, we pointed out that if you want to see where Obama's policies are going in terms of growing the government, shutting down private enterprise... Zimbabwe provides a perfect example of that. You know, they have so much unemployment there that only 6% of the people have a job in the private sector. 9% have a job with the government. 85% have no job. They're flocking into the city of Harare, the capital city. They're bringing their goats to try to survive, their bric-a-brac to try to sell. And this dictator who's been there for 35 years comes in and tells them, I don't want to see your goats. Get out of here. Go starve somewhere else. This is a guy who throws himself a million-dollar party, feasts on baby elephant and other exotic animals. Just five months ago, they were talking about how disgusting his birthday party was when he turned 91. He had a multi-million-dollar party, tens of thousands of people, this excess. And, of course, it's not just eating these animals. He had trophy animals just like this one. One of them was an old lion and is one of the farmers who actually was one of the 6% of the people who has a private sector operation, very much afraid of the fact that he might get thrown off of his farm by Robert Mugabe, went out and got this large banquet of zoo animals to give him, killed and mounted a lion, just like this dentist that we're demonizing, killed and mounted a crocodile for him. But of course, we're not supposed to pay attention to that. We're not supposed to pay attention to the suffering of the people, black and white. You know, he didn't just allow 80% of the animals, the wildlife in that area to die out of mismanagement, out of crony capitalism, corruption, a kleptocracy, a Marxist dictatorship. 
If you want to know what's happening to the exotic wildlife in Zimbabwe, it isn't that they're being lost to people like this dentist. It's Robert Mugabe who's doing that. And he pretty much hunted white landowners into extinction as well. And the black people who were left behind suffered under 11 million percent inflation under this guy. To give you an idea of what that is, you got 5% inflation. That means that next year, something that you pay $100 for this year is going to be $105. If you've got 11 million percent inflation, if you've got something that costs $100 today, next year it's going to cost 11 million. They printed a $1 billion Zimbabwe note. I don't know whose picture they put on it, but it only survived for a few months because they had to completely abandon the currency. Destroying the private sector, creating this kind of authoritarian, crony system, a kleptocracy, which is what he got. It's, not, it's even beyond crony capitalism. And dividing the country into racial groups like he did so that you can rule. That is where we're headed with this government as well. And I don't think it's going to stop with Obama. That's where you need to put the glasses on. That's where you need to see that this is an agenda that is bigger than one man. This is an agenda that is shared by the vast media empires that exist, the handful of people that control all of our media, essentially, the people who control our educational system, the bureaucracies that are in place. These are all things that are going to remain in place regardless of which one of the Gilligan Island characters you choose to vote for. It is simply identity politics. That's all it is. We're going to see that in spades when we have the very first debate this week. But of course, if we look at these candidates, if we talk about their policies, the people who love them are now so invested in them that they accuse me, for example, this last week, I've gotten all this hate mail from people about the things that I pointed out about Trump and other candidates, but especially Trump. They say he's the only man who can save us. You need to open your eyes. You need to put on the glasses. You need to look at these people, how they are being used, and understand that even if you buy into this horse race election, it hasn't even started. There isn't even, hasn't even been a debate. The first debate is going to be this Thursday. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about some of the amazing things that some of the candidates have been saying when we come back. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host on this Sunday, August 2nd, 2015, live edition. We're going to cover news in this segment. And of course, earlier in the show, we pointed out that the Navy apparently is going to charge an officer who fired back against an Islamic jihadist during these Chattanooga terror attacks. This is a story that is up on Infowars.com. This is based on a report from Alan West. There had been rumors that he would be charged for discharging a firearm on federal property because they're not even supposed to have weapons to protect themselves. And even after this attack, of course, uh, they were not allowed to get firearms because this is not anything new. Even on a military base where we had Nidal Hassan kill many people at Fort Hood, they did not allow the soldiers there to arm themselves even after that. This is a report from Alan West saying that this knucklehead who runs the Navy, Secretary of the Navy Ray Mabus, is more concerned about lifting the ban on transgendered sailors. And he has no problem with the Navy seeking to destroy the career of a sailor, a commander of an installation. He says even if it is his own private firearm, he should get a medal for defending the people there. Absolutely right. It is an outrage to see what is going on with this. You can get more information about that story at Infowars.com. Now, when we look at things like gun control... Let's understand that that's not the only way, of course, that they're trying to control us. We talk about uh, gun control constantly. It's really about people control, isn't it? Well, there's another kind of control that is on the horizon coming at us very rapidly, and it is transportation control. Like gun control, transportation control is about controlling the people, about controlling you. Look at one example here coming at us. This is a new report coming out of CBS saying, could boarding passes become a thing of the past? Another way to automate the vetting of everybody to allow us to have permission to travel by the TSA, the transportation. And that's all forms of transportation, folks. It's not the airport security administration. It's the transport security administration. And I think you need to get rid of the idea that it's security. Understand they're coming after your liberty. So this is the Transportation Liberty Destroying Administration. They say, our big picture dream is that any time you have to prove 
who you are during any of the steps of air travel, you can simply use your fingerprints instead. We want this to be a curb to seat experience. Yeah, it's become a curb to seat experience, hasn't it? A curb to seat experience of tyranny. And that's where we're headed. There's many different aspects of this, but look at this scenario, how they want to keep going with this. This is a, a, a product called Clear, a biometric secure identity company. They did this test in April with Alaska Airlines. And of course, this is a biometric system. They say they are delighted with the results. A consumer news editor at Condé Nast Traveler said it's very, very cool. He said, anytime an airline is making the travel process easier, I'm in favor of that. Yes, they make tyranny so easy, don't they? All you have to do is set back and let them do it to you. They'll just make it very easy. It's fighting the tyranny that is difficult. They say, well, of course, there's still some kinks to be worked out, including security concerns that the system could be breached, that the fingerprints could be spoofed. You mean like those millions of fingerprints that they stole from federal employees out of their biometric database? You mean that kind of problem? So they can't even secure it, but they're going to demand it from you. Here's another way they're going to control you. A mileage tax being tested in the Northeast. This is in Hartford, Connecticut. A potential new tax to help pay for the governor's massive new transportation plans has started a firestorm of activity on the internet, they say. A special committee has point, he's appointed to find a way to pay for the improvements is looking at a new tax on the number of miles you drive each year. They say it's based kind of on a test program in Oregon where volunteer drivers are paying a tax on the number of miles they drive as measured by a GPS. Look, this is something that is going to control you. It is part of the Agenda 21 environment. If you want to know how this is going to work out, it's about smart meters is one other aspect of how they're going to monitor you. They want to keep you with the, with the Agenda 21. They want to confine you to a very small area, into very small cities, and they want to measure everything you do and control everything you do. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. We were talking in the last segment about transportation control. It's not just gun control. They're looking to control you in a variety of ways. Gun control, transportation control, they're all about controlling people. It's not about controlling cars. It's not about controlling guns. It's not about controlling the sale of guns. It's about controlling you. Do you understand the agenda behind it? Have you put on the glasses? Do you see they live? Do you see that they are lying to you? We had earlier in the program a tribute to Roddy Piper, who died Friday at the age of 61. He was someone who had, in real life, put on the glasses. He could see the agenda. He knew what was behind this. Of course, a large part of this is smart cities. One of the reasons that they are doing the things, like I mentioned about in the last segment, proposing mileage taxes. We've got tests being conducted in Connecticut as well as Oregon to charge you by the mile. And, of course, that will require that they know how not only how much you drive, but when and where you drive. It's going to require total surveillance for them to collect their taxes. It isn't like something that you pay at the pump where they don't have any control or knowledge of what you're doing. They're going to have tax systems that will be there so that they can watch and control you. Very much like our income tax system. You know, the Europeans pay much higher taxes with a value-added tax they pay a sales tax at every level of production. So this cumulative tax can get quite expensive, quite burdensome. It's even difficult to calculate the entire amount of the tax, which you would think the government would like because they'd like to hide how much tax they charge us. They don't like it to be out there. That's why they multiply the number of taxes that they apply to us. Putting them a little bit over here, a little bit over there. When it first comes in, it's a very small tax. Then they ramp it up. But we have an income tax that is very abusive, that's very intrusive, that's very controlling, very difficult to comply with. Why would they do that? You would think that that would annoy the people, that it might even provoke a tax revolt. Evidently, not in America. But let me tell you that the point of the income tax is a couple of reasons. First of all, they want to have a means of control. They want to manipulate you to buy the kinds of things that... They want you to buy from their crony capitalist friends. They want you to get a home mortgage. They want you to do other certain types of activities. So they give you the carrot and the stick to make you do that. But the other part of it we have seen in spades in the Obama administration. It's always been a part 
of presidential administrations that they will use the income tax to attack their enemies, their political enemies. We've never seen it done as broadly as we've seen it done in the Obama administration, nor as openly as we've seen it done in the Obama administration. With a wholesale attack of a massive political movement at the ground level, going after the donors to small government Republican organizations, and then getting away with it. That's the amazing thing. So there's an element of control in that. And let me tell you, when you look at these mileage taxes, it's that type of thing. Because you could easily pay a sales tax and it could be anonymous. They don't know what you're doing with that fuel. They don't know where you're going when you're traveling. And they have no capability to shut you down. That's the next thing that is coming. But of course, this is all going to feed not only a... An espionage agenda, let's put it that way, a control agenda, a big brother agenda, looking at everything that you're doing. But it's also another part of the way to force you into smart cities. Once they have computer-driven, government-controlled cars, they will be able to limit your movements. They will be able to shut your car down at any time and confine you to the cities. If you look at Agenda 21, which is a UN agenda, they have... As part of that agenda, a way to confine almost everyone to a very small area of land and leave the vast areas of land off limits to you. Of course, they will be able to enjoy it. Look at this story from Alex Newman. This is about a week ago. He says, smart cities to spy on you in ways that Orwell never imagined. This is from New American. He says, smart cities will be watching you. In fact, they already are watching you. Unless humanity takes action soon to rein in its would-be omniscient rulers... The technological dystopia being erected all around you will ensure that governments and dictators know virtually everything about everyone. A massive part of that is the transportation aspect. But he's talking about the smart meters as well. The plot to create a total surveillance state under the guise of making cities smart will cost taxpayers trillions of dollars too. But the price tag in terms of lost privacy and liberty will be far higher. So he's talking about the broad basis of the Internet of Things, intelligent computer-controlled surveillance devices being made out of everything, out of every appliance, out of every tool, every camera, everywhere. One of those, of course, is smart meters. Look at this story from Activist Post. Thousands of smart meter fires, new whistleblowers and court evidence. They say whistleblowers who wish to remain anonymous who contacted Activist Post say that they have repaired over 200,000 meters in the field. They've been warning their supervisors about smart meter problems for nearly a decade. They've had enough of the lies, and they want you to know what they know. So they have a documentary that you can see there. They say on top of the explosive new details, they find that there are at least four major sources of vulnerability in these meters that cause arcing that would result in fires. That's four failure modes that they have there. So understand when we talk about smart meters, we've always talked about how there's many different aspects that you should oppose these things on. Number one is it's a way of charging you more for electricity. They're going to use these smart meters to adjust the electrical rates for the time of day. So you will pay more when you use this during rush hour, for example, or preparation for rush hour, the early mornings. Everybody goes to work. Everybody goes to school at about the same time. That's why we have rush hour. And so there's a rush hour for electrical use as well, a peak hour. They're going to charge more for those hours. But, of course, you don't have any control about that, do you? If you did, you wouldn't get involved in the rush hour traffic. But you don't have any control over that because somebody else tells you what time you need to be at work, what time you need to be at school. And now they're going to charge you for peak usage at a higher rate. It's just a way of increasing the cost of your electricity. But then, of course, there's also the privacy aspect that we talked about it. And then there's the health aspect. You know, it was just on Friday that yet another study came out. Actually, it was kind of a meta study. They looked at uh, quite a few studies and looked at the results of the effect of cell phones on brain tumors, found a 300 to 500 percent increase in brain tumors. Now, you need to understand that these smart meters that we have in the United States are wireless. They send out very powerful pulses wirelessly. This is something that, unlike a cell phone, you have no control over. This is demanded to be put on your house by the power company, so you cannot turn this thing off. Very concerning when you look at this. Understand that in some places, like Italy, when they wanted to put smart meters on, and of course, they still had the problems of 
increasing your cost of invading your privacy. But to get away from the health issue, they didn't make them wireless. And you have to ask yourself, I've asked myself this question, why is it that the electric power meters need to be wireless when there's a health concern from people? They've got an electrical wire that they can run the signal over already running to the house. They can multiplex it over that wire. Why would they need to do that? Perhaps they have another agenda. So you've got a cost issue, you've got a privacy issue, you've got the health concerns about the electromagnetic radiation, and then now you have a new fire concern about this. In terms of the way they're going to control our cars, it's not just taxing us by every mile we drive. Now we've got a New York congresswoman, Kathleen Rice, who wants to force everyone to put breathalyzers in all the cars. You'll be paid for yet another electronic device that most of us do not need. It's been used as a punishment for people who are caught drunk driving, people who cannot control their alcohol use or their driving. But now we're all going to be punished with this. This is from DC Clothesline. They say, as time goes on, cars are becoming less of a symbol of freedom and status, more like automated golf carts that coddle their drivers. And every other year, they add more features that take the driver's ability out of the loop and at the same time, track everything you do. Now, if this law goes through from New York Congressman, Congresswoman Kathleen Rice, what was once punishment of delinquent drivers may soon become a new standard. She wants to force car manufacturers to install the breathalyzers on all vehicles and understand you are going to be forced to pay for it. They don't mind putting that in. That just ups their profit margin. But you will be forced to pay to have that. It'll raise the cost of your car. It'll raise the cost of maintenance. Where does it all end? We see that CISPA is coming back yet again. And when we look at the data that's being collected on us, not only by the cities, but by the private corporations, understand that's where this is headed. We'll be right back. We're going to go to political news in just a moment. Before we do, I want to let you know about a special that we have at InfoWarsLife.com. It's a special on Silver Bullet. Buy two silver bullet colloidal silver at InfoWarsLife.com. Get two free. And right now, that's, that free shipping special that we had through the month of July has been extended for another couple of days. I don't know how long that's going to run. But for the time being, you can still get this special as well as everything else at the InfoWarsLife.com. You can get that for free shipping. Again, that's buy two silver bullet colloidal silver and get two free. Silver bullet is a powerful colloidal silver that is both free of artificial additives and perfect for your preparedness supplies. Concentrated to 30 parts per million. It's in a pure base of deionized water. There's a reason that listeners have dubbed Silver Bullet as their preparedness silver. And much of the stuff that we have at InfoWars.com is sold out because of that July special that we had on free shipping. You can still get Silver Bullet. You can still get the Survival Shield X2 Nascent Iodine. Both of those things are great to have for preparedness. They are both in stock right now. And for another couple of days, we're going to have store-wide free shipping at InfoWarsLife.com. Now, yesterday was an interesting day. It's going to get interesting in terms of the presidential horse race this week. We're going to have a debate later this week. People are wondering who's going to make the cut. I think there's going to be some kind of a junior varsity debate uh, with the people who don't make the top 10. I'm not sure if that's still in the works. I would imagine that Fox News will milk that for everything that they can. They're also going to have Frank Luntz there who will tell you what to think and how to interpret it. Tell you he'll have an audience there to model how you should respond to the candidates. You understand how they manipulate you with this, right? I mean, <laughs> it's absolutely a joke. This whole thing is a psyop, folks. You need to put on the glasses. You need to take a look at what's going on. They're going to have this debate. And then afterwards, Fox News, just like they do with all these other debates that they've had through the years, they'll go through and they'll say, oh, look, when this candidate said such and such, the meter went way up. We were measuring this audience's response. And look, they, they responded really favorably to that. But then they responded very unfavorably to this. And everybody's going to look there, sit there like Homer Simpson in their couch. And they're going to look at this and say, oh, yeah, I think that way, too. Subliminally, folks, that's how it's going to work. You got to fight it. You got to fight it. Okay, now what happened yesterday? We had five presidential hopefuls go to the Koch brothers and bow the knee. If you want to know why Donald Trump is a front runner, here's what he had to say on Twitter. <laughs> he got right to the point. He said, I wish good luck to all the Republican candidates that traveled to California to beg for money, etc., from the Koch brothers. Puppets? Question mark. 
to the point. <laughs> that is great. That's what Donald Trump put out on his on his Twitter account, and he's had several thousand retweets of that very succinctly stated and exactly the issue. And as they point out in this article from uh, politics, they say on politics, they say Trump, who has focused relentlessly on illegal immigration, does not appear to be viewed favorably by the Kochs. Hmm, why would that be? Uh, well, maybe they support open borders. So who are the people that went to this Koch confab? Well, we have Jeb Bush. We have Marco Rubio, we have Scott Walker, Ted Cruz, and Carly Fiorina. They're all there looking for money, looking for the approval of the Koch brothers. And I got to say, when they go to this, as it's termed, private event, do they realize just how this looks going hat in hand to these guys? I mean, it is just pathetic to see this happening. What is going on with the TPP? And what is their position on that? They say that the Koch brothers welcome donors and they encourage 450 like-minded business leaders there to stop crony capitalism, even if those policies hurt their bottom lines. Really? Maybe with uh, the Trans-Pacific Transatlantic Partnerships, would they oppose that? I haven't heard anything from the Koch brothers. I know that some of the think tanks that they support, support the secret corporate trade agreements saying that they're free trade. Look. All you libertarian think tanks like Cato and everything, this is not free trade, folks. We can have that discussion about what free trade is. These secretly negotiated agreements that are created by corporate lobbyists go way beyond free trade. They affect our sovereignty. Senator Sessions, who looked at it, said, you are creating a transnational committee, a transnational governance. We're not going to be allowed, he pointed out, with the past a trade promotion authority that has now passed and been signed. They're not going to be allowed to amend this agreement that is presented to them by the corporate lobbyists. It's going to be an up or down vote. They're going to have 20 minutes of debate. They cannot have a filibuster, et cetera, et cetera. No amendments, but once it's passed, this transnational governance committee that is going to be created by these treaties, that group, that council, we don't know who's going to be there. It's not going to be elected. How does it come into being? We don't know. We haven't seen the details on this. But that committee, not the elected representatives of the different states that are involved in this, that committee will then set new policy. It's going to be something that they cannot amend. They simply pass it. And then once it's finished, it's a living document, as Senator Sessions pointed out. So how do the Koch brothers feel about it? How does Donald Trump feel about it, for example? Donald Trump has said that he didn't like the Trade Promotion Authority and he didn't like the Trans-Pacific Partnership, these agreements, because he didn't trust Obama to get a good deal. Well, it is far worse than that, because as we've seen from the little bit of it that has been leaked by WikiLeaks and others, this is a sovereignty destroying agreement. This is something that once it is passed, even if Obama got a good deal, even if a President Trump got a good deal, that's not the point. The point is, is that this transnational committee will then be able to change it at will without any input or being able to stop it by these individual nations. It is a way to do global governance. We see that's what's happening in Europe. That's what Alex has been reporting on and will be reporting on. We know that they've created the European Union and created economic crisis like we see in Greece and elsewhere. And out of that economic crisis, they used that as an excuse to take sovereignty. That was the solution that was put out by PIMCO, the largest bondholder about Europe. That was also the solution that was put out by Alan Greenspan. Many people have said the only way to solve this problem in Greece, for example, is for Greece and the other European Union countries to sacrifice their sovereignty so that they can maintain the euro. See, in order to keep from having an economic collapse, they have to give up their own self-rule. And we've seen that as part of the conditions that were put out by the Troika. And of course, it's not a good enough deal for the Troika. They're now renegotiating that yet again. But some of the things that they put in there were things that would require Greek businesses to stay to work on Sundays. Because, you know, we can't have these lazy serfs not paying the bankers on uh, seven days a week. They have laws at the current time that would give people at least one day a week rest, but they would override those laws as they would many other things because they're taking their sovereignty. They're going to create a political union. They're going to unite these regions into a one world government or governance. 
is really a distinction without a difference. It's something we've been told about for a very long time by Zbigniew Brzezinski. The Council on Foreign Relations has talked about it. The Trilateral Commission was set up on this blueprint. Stay with us. We'll be right back. And we're going to talk about immigration. And we're going to talk about what's coming up in this presidential horse race. Stay with us and put on the glasses. We'll be right back. This segment, we're going to talk a little bit about politics. Of course, we have the presidential debate coming up on Thursday. We still don't know who the 10 are going to be in that on the GOP side. Let's talk a little bit about the Democrat side. Let's talk about Hillary Clinton, which seems to be the only viable front runner out there, according to uh, most of the horse race analysis. You know, they're, this is really is a horse race. They're handicapping all these people. But, of course, she has a lot of money. She and Bill have raised $140 million in the last seven years, including up to $750,000 for each public speech. This is an article from the Daily Mail pointing that out. And, of course, Planned Parenthood, the story that we talked about earlier in the show, a judge who blocked the Planned Parenthood videos, putting an injunction against the release of any further uh, sting videos from the Center for Medical Progress, that judge who blocked that video is an Obama appointee, and he raised $230,000 for Obama. Now, how does it work with Hillary Clinton? She is also involved in this. She's gotten a lot of money from Planned Parenthood. Rand Paul has called her out on this. The Washington Free Beacon also has called her out on this. They say Planned Parenthood received millions of dollars after lobbying Clinton's State Department. While Secretary of State, they say, Planned Parenthood lobbied the Department of State, got tens of millions of dollars from foreign policy agencies like USAID tied to the State Department. They steered more than $100 million in funding to Planned Parenthood. What did it cost them to get that? It cost them $3.4 million in lobbying spent during Obama's first term. So you spend $3.4 million and you get hundreds, more than $100 million in funding. That's why we have the problem in Washington that we have, because of that kind of return on investment. It incentivizes corruption. It incentivizes the very worst people to get into Washington, because for a little bit of money, for $3 million, you can get over $100 million if you grease the right palms, if you support the right party, the right politicians, the right candidates. That's the essence of what's wrong there. And, of course, it isn't going to be stopped by some kind of campaign finance reform. It's the amount of money that's there. The money, the power that is in Washington is drawing that corruption in like a black hole. I have very little good to say about Chris Christie, but I'll say one thing about him. He was able to reduce Planned Parenthood funding five times in four years. Now, it wasn't just his strength of will going up against a Democrat-controlled a House and Senate. It was the fact that the state of New Jersey has to meet a budget. Washington does not have to meet a budget. Washington has this thing called the Federal Reserve that just prints all this paper money for them. And we know how that eventually works out. We talked about that earlier in Zimbabwe, where they eventually went into hyperinflation. They went to 11 million percent inflation there. There is no fiscal responsibility necessary for Washington if we don't change the rules. If we allow the Federal Reserve to continue to print this money and put us further and further into debt. All they require to keep this happening is for us to pay the interest on the loan. That's what the income tax is about. That's why you suffer through that. That's why they created it at about the same time they created the Federal Reserve. It is an interest-only loan. It is a reverse mortgage on America for the bankers to take everything. And one day, it's going to turn into a balloon note like we have seen in Greece and like we've seen in Zimbabwe, like we've seen in Venezuela. That day of reckoning is coming unless we can wake up. That is the true benefit of these presidential campaigns. Ron Paul ran twice. He was completely shut out by the system. But we learned two things from it. Number one, we learned about the political corruption of the system, didn't we? If you didn't learn a lot about political corruption in the GOP, about the political corruption in the media from watching the Ron Paul campaign, you don't have the glasses on. 
Okay, you need to put them back on. Go back and look at that historically. Look at the many different caucuses and primaries and how they were rigged, how they lied about it, starting with the Iowa caucus. The idea that Rick Santorum was eventually declared the winner by three votes or something. I mean, this guy walked in the night before they had the Iowa caucus. He walked into a bar with a camera crew. Nobody even knew him. They told him to shut down, sit down and shut up. They wanted to watch the game. And then they want us to tell the very next day, tell, get us to think the very next day that he somehow won that. Come on, they were rigging that thing from the get-go. But the other thing that came out of that, which is equally important to know, is how the financial situation is being rigged by the Federal Reserve. Ron Paul's campaigns educated a vast number of people in America about the true nature of the Federal Reserve, the private Federal Reserve, about the true nature of what's going on in this country. It's very important to have those kinds of discussions. You will still need to act primarily locally, like I said, but you need to understand what the agenda is, nationally as well as globally. And you need to understand that when we look at people like Hillary Clinton and these other people, they have this money because they get that kind of leverage from the power that they have. So what do we do to stop this? As I've said before, we've got to stop incentivizing it. Let's take a look at, while well, we're on Planned Parenthood, let's look at what another candidate, Mike Huckabee, said. He was asked at a forum if he would use federal troops or the FBI to stop people from having abortions. And this is what he said. He said, we'll see if I get to be president. He said, all Americans should be protected. In other words, he's implying, well, yes, I would. He didn't say, well, we need to do something else. No, I'll, maybe I'll use federal troops to stop people from having an abortion. And I look at that and I say, really, is that the best solution you can come up with? I don't want to see innocent children die either. But to me, I look at this and it is a poverty of ideas. When you only have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. When the only thing you can think of for every problem is to make a federal law and to enforce it by a martial law approach, that's why we are where we are. Because that's the kind of approach that many conservatives like Huckabee, who should know better. This guy's a former pastor. He should know that drug addiction is a spiritual problem. Or you can call it a psychological problem if you're not a believer. It's a spiritual problem, folks. It needs to be handled in different ways rather than creating SWAT teams and jackbooted thugs to go kick in the doors of homes without warrants, killing innocent people, stopping people on the streets, stealing people's cars without finding them guilty of anything, without even charging them with a crime. But that's where this kind of attitude leads. What, what could we do, though, to stop it? Well, maybe we could stop subsidizing it. I just told you about how the federal government, just one department, the State Department, gave hundreds, over $100 million worth of funding to Planned Parenthood because they got $3.5 million worth of lobbying from Planned Parenthood. So when you want to stop something, the first thing you can do is stop subsidizing it. Cut the funding first. That's what Rand Paul says in this video. We've got it. You can see this video on Infowars.com. New Rand Paul video ad attacks Planned Parenthood. They say over half a billion tax dollars every year. They perform abortions. They sell baby parts, says a voiceover on the video. Paul says that his campaign is planning to run hard hitting TV, radio, and internet ads. If you guys got that ready, I'd like to play that ad. Go ahead, play that ad. Planned Parenthood takes over a half a billion tax dollars every year. They perform abortions and sell baby body parts. Rand Paul is taking action. As a pro-life doctor, Rand Paul cared for premature babies to save their sight. As a conservative leader, Rand is forcing a vote this week to end taxpayer funding of Planned Parenthood. Standing for life from day one, Dr. Rand Paul for president. I'm Rand Paul and I approve this message. See, there's different ways we can attack these, these, these problems. One of the ways is to stop subsidizing it. And as I've said before, when you look at immigration, one of the first things we need to do is to stop subsidizing it. Look at this report from the UK. They say this is a global immigration crisis. Yes, it is a problem. It is to create a global economic crisis to usher in global government. This is what the Home Secretary in the UK, she said a first step to make is to make Britain less attractive. We'll talk about that when we come back. They're going to stop subsidizing the welfare benefits to stop drawing people in the country. 
That's the way you attack these problems first. Stay with us. We'll be right back. We're going to get back to what I was just getting into as we had to go to break into the issue of illegal immigration. And as the British Home Secretary said, this is a global migration crisis. She's working with the French uh, correspondent and and the uh, French government to try to stop the situation in Calais, where they have massive numbers of people coming in from the third world, coming in through the uh, English, uh, through the uh, channel that goes between uh, France and uh, England, hijacking trucks, climbing on top of trucks. We've shown you the pictures of that. I want to go back to that. Talk about the tent cities that are being set up in the United States, as well as the contempt of a lawsuit being exhibited by the Obama administration, a lawsuit over immigration. Before we do, however, I want to let you know that this hour of the Alex Jones Show has been brought to you by the products that we sell at InfoWarsLife.com. We had free shipping for the month of July that has now been extended for another couple of days. They say only a few days left. I don't know how long that's going to run. Uh, right now, though, you can get it today. We have in stock Survival Shield X2, nascent iodine. When I buy a product, I like to get some reviews. That's one of the things I look for. I go to sites like Amazon where I can read the reviews. Even if I don't buy the product there, I like to know what other people are talking about, what their experience has been. We have over 400 reviews at InfoWarsLife.com just on Survival Shield X2 Nascent Iodine. Over 99% of those respondents would recommend it to their friends, to their family. Let me read you a couple of reviews that are there. Uh, this is one from Joseph Jenkins, Dallas, Texas. He says, honestly, I've never felt this good and clean inside out. I have tried dozens of other products, but these from InfoWars are dead on and produce dramatic results in good ways. God bless and keep your head down, Info Warriors. Another one from Rocky Point, North Carolina. I started taking this product and found it's helped my thyroid. My thyroid had a bulge and has been had been found to be non-cancerous, which is good. This product, I think, reduced this problem or has at least kept it from getting bigger. I now take it full strength, sometimes dilute it with water. Thank you. I have recommended this product to others. Again, you can read those reviews. You can read over 400 at InfoWarsLife.com on just that product on our nascent iodine X2. You can get it while it's in stock at InfoWarsLife.com. And right now, we still have that free shipping extended for a few days more. It was so popular, Alex Jones uh, extended it uh, from Europe. Let's go back to the immigration news that we had. Oh, before we do, before we do, there's an interesting story that came up in a report that Alex filed about government targeting patriot lawmakers in a nationwide crackdown. We have the attorney general here in Texas that they're coming after, and Alex had filed this report. It was over a month ago that InfoWars.com, first report of the world, that the Texas attorney general, Tea Party rising star, battling the globalists on every front, being attacked by the establishment Republican Party, was going to be indicted by a Texas grand jury. We saw Tom DeLay indicted similarly for raising money through political organizations that was completely legal. Uh, we've also seen Dinesh D'Souza, the filmmaker, indicted and uh, now under psychiatric uh, evaluation by the government after nine months in prison for getting five friends to donate money. The judge said it's mentally ill to donate money against Hillary Clinton. He actually said that. You can look it up yourself. This is the same party that's now suppressing videos of the babies being born and then uh, being kept alive so the organs can be properly taken. That's in the news today, but that's not a crime. Hillary taking money from foreign dictators at the State Department to transfer arms isn't a crime. Uh, the Texas Attorney General advised two investors to donate money, the government claims, to a Texas company. And he didn't supposedly disclose to them in writing that he was a representative of them. Okay, maybe this is illegal. In fact, if he did something wrong, put him in jail. But what about Fast and Furious? What about Benghazi? What about all the political corruption we've been seeing and the fact that no one gets in trouble for the IRS persecuting hundreds of thousands of people and it coming out that they lied? I mean, it'd be like if you executed some low-level German officer who wasn't even in the SS at Nuremberg and then let Hitler go. Or Hermann Goering or Heinrich Himmler. I mean, it, it's, it's just ridiculous. And the Republican leadership, the ones that bring you Obamacare, the ones that bring you open borders, they're the ones mum on this and basically attacking the Attorney General because they're scared of a Tea Party movement led by Rand Paul and others taking it over. 
So this is the establishment circling the wagons. Republican and Democratic groups are giving massive money to defeat the Tea Party, the Libertarian movement. Not that the Tea Party's perfect. It's just that the establishment's attacking it because it doesn't want to bring the country down. More reports coming at Infowars.com. We're going to be in Italy breaking everything down. Infowars.com. Alex Jones reporting from the front lines. Alex is absolutely right. When you look at Hillary Clinton getting tens of millions of dollars bundled, when you look at these five GOP presidential candidates going to the Koch brothers for money for this confab, and then you look at Dinesh D'Souza. Bundled together $20,000 of his own money, didn't report it properly, but he doesn't get a fine. He gets a felony charge. He gets a judge who wants to treat him as if he's some kind of a serial killer doing continual psychological evaluations of him. Come on, this is incredible, the corruption. As Alex pointed out, look at Fast and Furious. What are they doing about Fast and Furious? They're not investigating that. They're investigating people who are politically opposed to them. This kind of political persecution now is coming out of the closet. It's always been done secretly or, a, you know, in kind of an indirect way so people didn't really see they could deny that, that was really what was happening. Now the gloves have come off. They're doing it openly. Look at when we're talking about Fast and Furious. Look at this new article. A Garland, the Gar, one of the Garland shooters. Uh, this, of course, was the situation near Dallas where they had the Draw Muhammad contest. One of these Garland shooters got his pistol through Fast and Furious. About that, they say a gunman killed during his attack on Islamic prophet Muhammad Art Show in Garland, Texas, reportedly bought a pistol through the botched federal firearm sting. Yeah, you want to call it that? <laughs> this is uh, this is CBS doing. This. I'm sorry, New York Daily News doing this. Yeah, you want to call Fast and Furious a botched federal firearm sting? It was a sting to destroy the Second Amendment, and it blew up in their face. 1,400 firearms went missing. It was supposed to go into the hands of the drug cartel. And they point out on the Daily News, they say, it was a hiccup in the Eric Holder stint as Attorney General. Yeah, one of many little hiccups. Uh, corruption is what I would call it, open corruption. Now, we were talking about immigration. We were talking about how this is not just something that is happening in America. This is something that is happening globally. This is what the UK's Home Secretary, Theresa May, and her French counterpart have said is a global migration crisis. What is behind this? You need to understand what is behind it. It's behind the same thing, the same people, the same forces are behind this that are behind the secret trade agreements, the Trans-Pacific, Transatlantic agreements. They're trying to create an economic crisis. They're trying to bring down the first world nations. That's what these agreements are about. That's what this mass migration is about. They say the French and British governments have warned that the world is facing a global migration crisis and a dramatic joint intervention. Theresa May, the Home Secretary of the UK and her French counterpart, call on countries across Europe and Africa to help solve the emergency caused by thousands of migrants congregating at their borders. What are they going to do? Are they going to build a massive Berlin Wall to keep people out? No, the first thing they're going to do is to stop incentivizing the immigration. Remove the incentives. Remove the subsidies for Planned Parenthood first before you call out the troops, Huckabee. Remove the incentives for people to come into this country, the massive government incentives, as well as go after some of the, the companies that are using them for cheap labor first. Now, they say in a... In a uh, what they're suggesting is, as a first step to make Britain less attractive, the Home Office announced plans to cut the weekly cash allowances that support thousands of failed asylum seekers with families. So you stop incentivizing it. You cannot have this welfare state. You eventually run out of other people's money, and that's what we're running out of is other people's money. Look at this story out of Texas, McAllen. The city of McAllen set up another tent outside of the Sacred Heart Church. More space is needed as illegal crossers continue to be released. Catholic Charities said federal authorities release the illegal crossovers without any travel documents. We've seen almost a doubling of our numbers, I would say, in the last three to four weeks, said the workers at the Catholic Church. There's a number of refugees that are being released now without bus tickets in hand. So when they come to the center, you know, we have to make arrangements for them. So they're helping them. They're facilitating it. They're not doing what they're doing in the UK and in France. At some point, we have to do that. Listen to what they're saying in the UK and France. They say Bedfordshire police have reported a seven-fold year-on-year increase in illegal entries in June. 
And they say that European efforts so far this year have smashed 17 gangs who are trafficking people across the Mediterranean to Europe. You have to do something about this. You cannot keep incentivizing it like we are in the United States. They say we will run out of something and we're like, oh my, what are we going to do? And then it almost seems like within an hour or two, the door opens up and things suddenly appear. Well, the days of that happening are numbered. It cannot go on forever. We cannot sustain massive immigration in the United States without doing something about it. And the first thing we need to do is to stop incentivizing it. We don't need to create a police state inside our borders or to create a Berlin Wall.